In the wake of my husband's devastating discovery of my infidelity, the repercussions were swift and merciless, casting a shadow of turmoil and despair over our once harmonious family unit. His reaction, a tumultuous whirlwind of emotions ranging from betrayal to anger, ultimately led to an unjust legal sentence that sentenced him to an agonizing seven years behind bars. As the weight of his incarceration settled upon our shattered family, the bonds that once held us together disintegrated into a sea of resentment and disdain, leaving me to grapple with the devastating consequences of my selfish actions. Night after night, as I sit alone in the suffocating silence of my empty home, I am haunted by relentless waves of self-condemnation, each echoing reminder of the irreparable damage I have wrought upon those I once held most dear. My children, distant and estranged, now regard me with a mixture of confusion and bitterness, their innocence tarnished by the fallout of my betrayal. And my ex-husband, once the cornerstone of my world, now harbors a deep-seated resentment towards the woman who callously shattered his trust and love. The fractures within my immediate family, once a source of strength and support, now serve as painful reminders of the irreversible rift that I have created through my selfishness and deceit. Reflecting on the events that led to this cataclysmic downfall, I am forced to confront the harsh reality that my actions were driven by nothing more than vanity and discontent. The affair, a reckless indulgence born of insecurity and dissatisfaction, offered a fleeting escape from the perceived monotony of my marriage, blinding me to the profound love and devotion that had sustained us for over two decades. My ex-husband, ever faithful and attentive, had always treated me as an equal partner, showering me with compliments and affection that I now realize I took for granted. Our relationship, forged in the innocence of youth and nurtured through the trials of adulthood, was a testament to the enduring power of love and commitment. Yet, despite his unwavering devotion, I found myself drawn to the allure of something new, a dangerous temptation that promised excitement and validation in equal measure. As I navigated the tumultuous waters of midlife, my newfound sense of vitality and confidence led me down a path of self-destruction, fueled by insecurity and longing for validation. In the arms of another man, I sought refuge from the perceived shortcomings of my marriage, oblivious to the profound pain and devastation that my actions would inflict upon those I held most dear. Now, as I confront the wreckage of my once happy family, I am filled with a profound sense of remorse and regret, grappling with the knowledge that I alone am responsible for the pain and suffering that I have wrought. In the silence of my empty home, I am forced to confront the harsh truth that true happiness cannot be found in fleeting indulgences or selfish desires, but rather in the steadfast love and commitment that I callously discarded in pursuit of something new. Suffered a panic attack and he was taken to the hospital for treatment. As I stood there, a whirlwind of emotions crashing over me, I couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of guilt and regret. The consequences of my actions had spiraled out of control, leaving devastation in their wake. I had allowed myself to be drawn into a dangerous liaison, blinded by the allure of something new and exciting, oblivious to the profound repercussions it would have on my life and the lives of those around me. It all started innocently enough, casual conversations with the new manager at work that gradually evolved into flirtation. Despite wearing my wedding ring as a symbol of my commitment, I found myself unable to resist his advances, drawn in by his charm and attention. Before I knew it, we were sharing personal details about our lives, and he had become a constant presence in my thoughts. Looking back, I realized now that what had begun as harmless banter had morphed into an emotional affair, a betrayal of the trust and love that my husband had placed in me. Yet, in the throes of the moment, I remained blind to the damage I was causing, convinced that I could compartmentalize my feelings and keep the two worlds separate. However, cracks began to appear in the facade when my ex-husband started to notice that something was amiss. Our arguments became more frequent, fueled by my growing detachment and his palpable sense of unease. I pushed him away, unable to confront the truth of my own actions, instead redirecting my frustrations towards him. Then came the pivotal moment when my ex-husband attempted to kiss me, and I recoiled in disgust, not at him but at the guilt and turmoil swirling within me. It was a wake-up call, a stark reminder of the mess I had created, but instead of facing it head-on, 
I buried myself deeper in denial, convincing myself that it was all just a misunderstanding. But fate had other plans, and a week later, I found myself face to face with the new manager, intending to end things once and for all. Yet, before I could utter a single word, he kissed me, and in that moment, all my resolve crumbled, and I was once again ensnared in his web of deceit. What followed was a tumultuous six-month affair, marked by secrecy and deception, as I found myself increasingly drawn to the excitement and novelty of something new, while my relationship with my ex-husband suffered. I distanced myself from him, criticizing his every move and demeaning him, blind to the pain I was causing. It wasn't until my brother confronted me about my ex-husband's deepening depression and thoughts of leaving that I was jolted out of my delusion. The gravity of my actions finally hit me, and I knew I had to make amends. I ended the affair, left my job, and resolved to show my husband the love and devotion he deserved. As the police arrived to arrest him, and paramedics tended to his injuries, I stood there, aghast at the destruction I had wrought. In that moment, I knew that there was no going back, no undoing the damage I had caused. All I could do was pick up the pieces of my shattered life and somehow find a way to move forward, haunted by the consequences of my actions forevermore. Visit our home, so I had to stay with my parents, who were not pleased with the situation, to say the least. My dad's silent disappointment weighed heavily on me, while my brother's furious outbursts pierced through the air like thunderbolts of condemnation. His eyes reflected a profound sense of betrayal, and his voice trembled with a mixture of anger and heartbreak as he demanded answers, asking how I could inflict such pain on my ex-husband, a man who had loved and trusted me with all his heart. Amidst the chaos, my mom tried to offer words of comfort, but her efforts only seemed to exacerbate the tension. My dad's frustration boiled over, his voice rising as he admonished her for trying to placate me. The atmosphere was tense, fraught with anger, resentment, and an overwhelming sense of betrayal. Meanwhile, the repercussions of my actions continued to unfold. The man I had the affair with lay in the hospital, his face mangled and bruised, requiring surgery to repair the damage inflicted during the altercation with my ex-husband. As I lay in my hospital bed, grappling with the guilt and shame that consumed me, I was suddenly attacked by a woman who stormed into my room, her eyes blazing with fury and indignation. It was the wife of the man I had the affair with, and her rage was palpable as she lashed out at me, blaming me for the destruction of her marriage. The trial loomed on the horizon, casting a dark shadow over my already shattered life. My sons distanced themselves from me, their once loving gazes now filled with disappointment and disdain. My daughters, too, turned their backs on me, their silence a deafening indictment of my actions. And my ex husband, the man I had vowed to love and cherish, refused to even look at me, his eyes burning with a hatred I had never seen before. During the trial, the painful details of my affair were laid bare for all to see, each word a dagger to the heart of my ex-husband and his family. I watched in horror as my ex-husband's anguish played out before me, his voice trembling with emotion as he recounted the moment he had walked in on us, his plans for a romantic weekend shattered in an instant. The recordings of his desperate call to 911 echoed through the courtroom, his sobs a haunting reminder of the pain I had caused. And as the images of my affair partner's injuries flashed across the screen, I felt a wave of nausea wash over me, the realization of my culpability hitting me like a ton of bricks. In the end, my ex-husband was sentenced to seven years in prison for his actions, a punishment that seemed harsh and unjust given the circumstances. My sons protested the sentence, their cries falling on deaf ears as the gavel fell, sealing my ex-husband's fate. In the months that followed, I struggled to rebuild my life from the ruins of my past. The lawsuits, the divorce proceedings, the financial hardships, each obstacle a painful reminder of the consequences of my actions. And as I navigated the fallout of my affair, I couldn't help but wonder if redemption was even possible, if there was any hope of atoning for the sins of my past and finding a way to move forward. Had inflicted on my children and family, I couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of regret and sorrow. Each day seemed to weigh heavier on my conscience, the weight of my actions bearing down on me like a leaden cloak. 
my attempts to reach out to my ex-husband were met with resounding silence, his rejection echoing in the empty space of our fractured relationship. The letters I penned with trembling hands returned unopened, each refusal a sharp stab to my already wounded heart. As the days stretched into weeks and the weeks into months, I found myself drowning in a sea of despair, my tears mingling with the water cascading down my face in the solitude of the shower. The guilt that consumed me threatened to engulf me entirely, its suffocating embrace leaving me gasping for air. My parents, once the pillars of strength in my life, now found themselves torn asunder by the fallout of my indiscretions. My mother's unwavering defense of me only served to widen the chasm between us, while my brother's silent condemnation spoke volumes of the rift that had formed between us. In the depths of my despair, I entertained thoughts of vanishing from it all, of escaping the crushing weight of my guilt and shame. But even as I entertained these fleeting fantasies, a small voice whispered in the recesses of my mind, urging me to seek help to confront the demons that plagued me. And so, with trembling resolve, I sought the guidance of a therapist, whose words cut through the fog of my despair like a beacon of light in the darkness. She helped me to see the depth of my betrayal, to recognize the extent to which I had taken my ex-husband for granted. With her guidance, I began to unravel the tangled web of my emotions to confront the harsh realities of my actions and their far-reaching consequences. I came to understand that my ex-husband saw me not as a casual acquaintance but as his partner in life, the mother of his children, and the love of his life. As the seasons turned and time marched inexorably forward, I watched helplessly as my children drifted further and further away from me, their once bright eyes now dulled by the pain of my betrayal. And yet, despite the gulf that separated us, I refused to give up hope, clinging to the belief that one day, they would find it in their hearts to forgive me. And then, as if by some miracle, a ray of light pierced the darkness of my despair. In early May of this year, my children returned home, their presence a balm to my wounded soul. Though their initial reception was cold, I refused to be dittered, determined to bridge the chasm that had formed between us. In those precious moments, as we sat together and shared our hopes and dreams, I felt a flicker of hope ignite within me, a belief that perhaps, just perhaps, there was still a chance for redemption. And though the road ahead would undoubtedly be fraught with challenges, I vowed to face them head on, armed with nothing but my unwavering determination and a newfound sense of purpose. The pain of the rift I caused them weighed heavily on my heart, intensifying my feelings of guilt with each passing day. Observing their smiles, their laughter, their easy camaraderie during dinner, it served as a poignant reminder of what we once shared, now lost to the abyss of my indiscretions. As August drew to a close, I eagerly awaited the milestone of my twin senior year, a day that coincided with their 18th birthday, brimming with plans for a joyous celebration. Yet, their unexpected request to postpone the festivities left me bewildered, a stark indication that perhaps our journey toward reconciliation was far from over. In my quest for understanding, I probed gently for the reasoning behind their decision, only to be met with a response that struck me like a blow to the chest. Because Dad is throwing us a party, and I don't want you near him one of them uttered, the words hanging heavy in the air, punctuating the painful truth of their father's return. The revelation of his release, shrouded in secrecy, shattered the fragile illusion of progress I had painstakingly built, leaving me reeling in its wake. Tears welled in my eyes as I grappled with the harsh reality of their happiness stemming not from our healing but from his return. Their father's presence, once a source of comfort and stability, had become a wedge driving us further apart. Desperate for clarity, I sought to unravel the tangled web of emotions that threatened to engulf me, reaching out to my brother in a futile attempt to bridge the chasm between us. Clutching the letters returned to me over the years, tangible remnants of my unspoken remorse, I made my way to his doorstep, yearning for reconciliation, for forgiveness, for a chance to set things right. And yet, my pleas fell on deaf ears, his rejection a bitter pill I struggled to swallow. As I stood on the threshold of his home, tears streaming down my cheeks, I reached out to him, hoping against hope for a glimmer of recognition, a spark of understanding. But his silence spoke volumes, a stark reminder of the chasm that separated us, 
leaving me to grapple with the harsh reality of our fractured relationship. In the depths of my despair, I clung to a flicker of hope, a belief that perhaps, with time and effort, we could find our way back to one another. And though the road ahead was fraught with uncertainty, I refused to surrender to despair, clinging to the belief that redemption was still within reach, if only we dared to grasp it. However, I always tried to maintain my composure and diffuse the situations peacefully. Nonetheless, her behavior began to take a toll on our relationship. As time passed, it became evident that her attitude wasn't just a phase, it was deeply ingrained in her character. Our arguments grew more frequent and intense, leading to a strained and toxic environment within our household. Despite these challenges, I remained committed to making the marriage work and sought ways to improve our communication and resolve conflicts amicably. Unfortunately, my efforts were often met with resistance and indifference on her part. She seemed content with the status quo and unwilling to make any meaningful changes or compromises. This realization left me feeling helpless and frustrated as I struggled to reconcile my love for her with the harsh reality of our deteriorating relationship. Ultimately, it became clear that staying together was no longer sustainable or healthy for either of us. Thus, we made the difficult decision to part ways and pursue separate paths in life. While the divorce was undoubtedly painful and emotionally draining, it also brought a sense of relief and liberation, knowing that we were no longer trapped in a toxic cycle of conflict and unhappiness. Despite the challenges, I have no regrets about the relationship as it taught me valuable lessons about love, communication, and self-worth. Moving forward, I am focused on healing and rebuilding my life while remaining open to the possibility of finding love again someday. It was a moment of shock and disbelief as the reality of my wife's infidelity hit me like a ton of bricks. All the suspicions and doubts I had pushed aside came crashing down around me in that instant. My heart sank as I stood there paralyzed by the betrayal unfolding before my eyes. The sight of my wife, the person I had trusted above all others, entangled with my closest friend shattered my world into a million pieces. The pain and anger that surged through me were indescribable. I felt like I had been punched in the gut, robbed of the love and loyalty I had thought we shared. Every memory, every moment we had spent together felt tainted by her deceit. The realization that she had been lying to me for years, accusing me of infidelity while she was the one committing the ultimate betrayal, left me reeling with a mix of emotions. As I stood there, grappling with the shock of the scene before me, a whirlwind of thoughts and questions raced through my mind. How could she do this to me? How long had this been going on? Was everything in our relationship a lie? The weight of the truth bore down on me, crushing any semblance of trust or hope I had left. In that moment, I knew that our marriage was over. There was no going back from this betrayal, no way to repair the irreparable damage she had inflicted. The love and trust that once bound us together had been shattered beyond repair, leaving behind nothing but pain and heartache. As I turned away from the scene, my mind buzzing with a jumble of emotions, I made a decision. I would not allow her deceit to define me or dictate my future. I would pick up the pieces of my shattered heart and move forward, determined to rebuild my life on my own terms. It wouldn't be easy, and the road ahead would be fraught with challenges and obstacles, but I refused to let her betrayal consume me. I would emerge from this ordeal stronger and more resilient than ever before, ready to face whatever the future held with courage and determination. The sheer shock and devastation that washed over me upon discovering my wife's infidelity were beyond words. It felt as though the very ground beneath me had crumbled, leaving me stranded in a world of betrayal and deceit. Here was the woman who had repeatedly accused me of wrongdoing, of infidelity all the while engaging in the very act she condemned me for. It was a betrayal of the highest order, one that cut deep into the core of my being. In that moment of profound revelation, a whirlwind of emotions threatened to consume me. Anger, hurt, disbelief they all surged within me, vying for dominance. I wrestled with the urge to confront them both, to unleash the full force of my fury upon them. But in the midst of that tempest of emotions, a small voice of reason whispered in the recesses of my mind, reminding me that such actions would only serve to exacerbate an already dire situation. 
so instead of confronting them head on, I made a calculated decision to gather evidence to capture the truth in all its painful glory. With a heavy heart and trembling hands, I retrieved my phone and discreetly snapped several incriminating photos of them, frozen in the throes of their illicit liaison. And then, without a word, without so much as a backward glance, I left the house, leaving them to their slumbering guilt. With each passing moment, the weight of my discovery bore down upon me, threatening to crush me beneath its oppressive burden. I knew that I couldn't keep this revelation to myself, that I had to share it with those closest to me, those who deserve to know the truth. And so, with a heavy heart and a trembling hand, I disseminated the damning evidence far and wide, sending shockwaves rippling through our social circle. As the dust began to settle, and the full magnitude of my wife's betrayal became painfully clear, I braced myself for her inevitable response. Would she deny it? Would she attempt to deflect blame onto me, as she so often did? To my surprise, her reaction was not one of defiance or denial, but of desperation, of pleading. She begged and pleaded with me to reconsider, to salvage what little remained of our shattered marriage. But I had already made up my mind. I could no longer endure the lies, the deceit, the betrayal. The trust that had once bound us together lay shattered at my feet, irreparable and irretrievable. And so, with a heavy heart and a resolute spirit, I made the decision to end our marriage, to sever the ties that bound us together. In the wake of our separation, I found myself grappling with a profound sense of disillusionment, of betrayal. How could someone I loved and trusted with all my heart betray me in such a callous manner? It was a question that haunted me day and night, a wound that refused to heal. And yet, even in the depths of my despair, I found solace in the knowledge that I had emerged from this ordeal with my dignity intact. I refused to be defined by my wife's actions to allow her betrayal to dictate the course of my life. And so, with my head held high and my heart unburdened by regret, I embarked on a new chapter of my life, one defined by strength, resilience, and the unwavering belief that better days lie ahead. My wife and I were still very much in love when I found out she was having an affair. We met in our hometown, and after I returned from college, we decided to settle down there. I fell in love with her at first sight, and after a few dates, we started dating officially. We got married after being together for a year and three months. Meeting and marrying May felt like a dream come true for me. She was the kind of woman I had always wanted to be with. She was hardworking, beautiful, intelligent, and a lot of fun to be around. Every day with her was exciting, and I cherished waking up next to her. May was also a passionate lover who cared deeply for me. Throughout our marriage, we rarely fought or hurt each other. We lived harmoniously, treating each other with respect. We lived a peaceful life and took good care of each other. I made sure to provide for May. Us about their whereabouts that evening. As the pieces of the puzzle started to fall into place, I felt a knot tighten in my stomach, a sinking feeling of dread settling over me. The realization dawned on me like a thunderbolt the possibility that my wife, whom I cherished and trusted implicitly, could be involved in an illicit affair with her best friend's husband. It was a revelation that shook me to my core, challenging the foundation of trust and security upon which our marriage was built. Despite my initial disbelief, I couldn't ignore the mounting evidence, the circumstantial clues that pointed to a betrayal of the deepest kind. With a sense of urgency, I retraced May's steps in my mind, scrutinizing every interaction, every exchange for any hint of deception. The image of her getting ready, the sparkle of excitement in her eyes as she prepared for her evening out, now seemed tainted with deceit. The unanswered phone calls, the inexplicable absence of her wedding ring each detail served as a damning indictment of her actions, a silent confession of guilt. As I grappled with the implications of her betrayal, I couldn't help but question the authenticity of our entire relationship. Had I been blind to the signs of her infidelity all along, or had she mastered the art of deception so completely that even I, her devoted husband, failed to see the truth? The thought of her sharing intimate moments with another man, of betraying the vows we had sworn to uphold, filled me with a mixture of anger, hurt, and disbelief. Yet, amid the turmoil of emotions, there lingered a glimmer of hope the hope that perhaps, 
in confronting the truth, we could salvage what remained of our shattered marriage. But deep down, I knew that some wounds ran too deep, some betrayals too profound to ever be forgiven. And as I faced the stark reality of our situation, I knew that regardless of the outcome, our lives would never be the same again. Upon discovering her betrayal, I was met with a tumultuous mix of anger, heartbreak, and disbelief. It felt like the very foundation upon which my entire life was built crumbled beneath my feet, leaving me adrift in a sea of uncertainty. The pain of her betrayal was compounded by the public humiliation she endured, as her actions were recorded for all to see. When faced with confronting her, I struggled to contain the flood of emotions raging within me. Anger, hurt, and betrayal battled for dominance as I stood before her, the person I had trusted above all others. She appeared ashamed and remorseful, yet her tears did little to assuage the deep-seated pain within me. Despite her attempts to explain, I found myself unable to fully comprehend the depths of her betrayal. In the aftermath of our confrontation, I grappled with the decision of what to do next. Divorce seemed inevitable, the only course of action that could offer some semblance of closure amidst the chaos. Yet, even as I navigated the tumultuous waters of legal proceedings, the scars left by her betrayal continued to fester, a constant reminder of the shattered dreams and broken promises that once defined our marriage. For weeks, I struggled to come to terms with the reality of my situation grappling with feelings of anger, hurt, and profound sadness. Every moment was haunted by memories of our time together, a painful reminder of what once was and what could have been. And as the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, I found myself slowly beginning to heal, the rawness of my pain gradually giving way to a sense of acceptance and, eventually, forgiveness. Yet, even as I found peace within myself, the scars left by her betrayal remained, a constant reminder of the fragility of trust and the devastation wrought by infidelity. And though time may have dulled the sharpness of my pain, it has done little to erase the memories of her betrayal, a painful reminder of the love lost and the trust broken in the wake of her indiscretions. In the end, I am left with little more than the shattered remnants of a life once lived, picking up the pieces of a heart broken by betrayal and rebuilding anew. And though the road ahead may be long and uncertain, I take solace in the knowledge that I am not alone, that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope for a brighter tomorrow.